Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM, where my friend Mario Cantone, actor, comedian, movie savant, selected our Friday night films this month. There are movies from the 1970s that impacted Mario as a kid. In some cases, rare cases, they are movies I begged him to pick. Mario and I were here in conversation for the first two films tonight. Then we sent him away because, you know, enough. But we have his next movie right now. It's a cult classic, a memorable black comedy from Paramount in 1971, Harold and Maud. Bud Court plays Harold. Harold's roughly 20. He's a peculiar fellow. He's from a wealthy family. Seems to have a lot going for him. He's also obsessed with death, not in a morbid, depressing way. It's more of a, well, that's curious way. Harold frequents the funerals of strangers. At one of those funerals, he meets Maud, that's Ruth Gordon, playing a woman pushing 80 who has some quirks of her own. They form a fast friendship that soon develops into something more, something unexpected. We'll have a bit more on Ruth Gordon after the movie. The story behind Harold and Maud is nearly as good as the movie itself. A UCLA graduate student, Colin Higgins, originally wrote it as a 20-minute short for his thesis. He showed the script to his landlady, whose husband just happened to be a Hollywood producer. She loved it, so the UCLA student and his landlady formed a production company and sold his idea, both becoming producers on the project. Their lack of experience shouldn't give you pause because one of their best decisions came right away. They hired Hal Ashby to direct. Ashby was an industry veteran, best known at the time for editing Norman Jewison films, including The Cincinnati Kid and The Thomas Crown Affair. A year and a half before Harold and Maude opened in theaters, Hal Ashby made his impressive directorial debut with another cult classic, The Landlord. As the decade progressed, so did the profile of Ashby's work. His first seven movies in Hollywood, all released between 1970 and 1979, represent an Alfred Hitchcock-like run of artistic success. After The Landlord and Harold and Maude came The Last Detail, Shampoo, Bound for Glory, Coming Home, and being there. Just stunning. Here's Hal Ashby's second film with a soundtrack from one of the most popular singer-songwriters in the world, Yusuf Islam, at the time known by his stage name, Cat Stevens. From 1971, Harold and Maude. When she starred in Harold and Maude, Ruth Gordon was in the midst of what is perhaps one of the most remarkable third acts in Hollywood history. Her career began when she was just 15, working as a background extra in silent films shot near her home in New Jersey. That same year, 1915, she made her Broadway debut in a production of Peter Pan. The stage was Gordon's primary outlet until she was signed to a contract at MGM in the 1930s. Where she played roles in films like Two-Faced Woman. As an actor, though, her film career never took off, so instead, Gordon focused on writing, finding success with a pair of scripts she co-wrote with her husband, Garson Kanan, Adam's Rib, and Pat and Mike. It wasn't until the 1960s that Gordon's screen acting career revved up, highlighted by an Oscar-winning performance in Rosemary's Baby in 1968. Ruth Gordon would continue to act on both film and television well into her 80s, making her final screen appearance in a 1987 comedy, The Trouble with Spies. Coming up, another film from the 1970s. This one stars Richard Roundtree. Shaft is next on Turner Classic Movies. Next on TCM, Shaft, then The Ritz, and later, Say Amen, Somebody... Hallelujah, TCM's on all night.